Uh Uh-oh, someone stole expensive jewelry from Mrs. Doris's hotel room. It happened at around 6 a.m. When the police came, the hotel owner told them that there was a heavy snowfall early in the morning. It destroyed all the evidence. Suddenly, one of the police officers spotted an infamous criminal. He had been accused of committing several burglaries, but always managed to get away with it. The man denied being at the hotel at that time. I only came a half hour ago, he claimed. The police officers immediately understood he was lying. How? There's a thick layer of snow on the criminal's car. If he had been driving to the hotel, there would be no snow on the hood. It would have melted or got blown away by the wind. And since it's sunny now, it can't be new snow. You are wandering through the forest, trying to find the way to a bus station. Suddenly, you meet a man. He tells you that soon, you'll see a crossroads. There will be a post with several signboards. The right signboard will lie, and the left one will tell the truth. A bit later, you indeed see this post. The right sign on it says, To the bus station, and the left one reads, To the forest. Where is the station? If the right sign lies and the left sign will lead you back to the forest, go straight and you'll get to the station. Damien is an artist. Recently, he has had problems with money. That's why he had to sell the only valuable thing he had, an expensive painting of a 17th century artist. The man who bought it showed the canvas to his friend Matthew, a police detective. After looking at the picture carefully, Matthew asked for Damien's address. He visited the artist and asked him where he had gotten the painting from. The man said, My granddad left it to me. You're lying, the detective said. You painted it yourself. How did he figure it out? There are electrical power lines in the picture, but they didn't exist in the 17th century. The police found out a diamond smuggler was going to leave the country through the largest airport in the city. They didn't know who it was and where this person was flying. That's why they searched the baggage of everyone who was departing on that day. Most people were angry and nervous, but one man was calm and polite. The airport security officers didn't find anything suspicious in his suitcase. But after the man got the sticker checked on his baggage, police asked him to come with him. They suspected he was the smuggler they were looking for. How did they understand it? While the security officer was putting the sticker on his suitcase, the man surreptitiously put his coat inside. The diamonds must be hidden in this coat. Mr. Carter, a rich man who collected antiques, asked Detective Morris to visit him. When the detective arrived, the collector said, I've just got a precious statuette, but I need to go away on business for a week, and I'm afraid someone will break into my house. My neighbors are so suspicious. Of course, the statuette is insured, but still… Detective Morris had some other urgent things to do. He promised to come back in the evening to figure out how to deal with the situation. But when he arrived several hours later, Mr. Carter rushed to him. I was away for an hour, no more. I drove my sister to the doctor, but when I came back, the statuette was gone. Detective Morris didn't believe the collector. Why? When he left the house in the afternoon, he noticed an apple lying in front of the left part of the gate. It's still there. But for a car to drive through, both parts of the gate have to be open. This means that Mr. Carter lied about leaving his home by car. A man with a bandage around his head came to a police station. I was hitchhiking when the car stopped. The driver asked me to check if one of the tires was flat. I bent over to look, and he hit me on the head. When I came to my senses, I found out he had taken all my money and cell phone. I remember he had a big car, large eyebrows, and a mustache. The police had a suspect. They found him in a cafe. But the man said it couldn't be him. He changed the tires on his car two weeks ago, and since then, the car had been parked near the cafe. 
The detective realized the man was lying right away. How? There's a no parking sign near the cafe. No car could be staying there for two weeks. Mr. and Mrs. Williams had to go on a business trip. It was a sudden and urgent matter. They didn't have time to take the money they had to the bank. That's why they decided to hide it under the doormat. When they returned, the money was gone. Three people visited the apartment while the owners were away. The Williams' neighbor, he helped them fix the TV. A housekeeper came to clean the apartment. And an electrician visited to deal with some lighting problems. Who took the money? It was the housekeeper. She was the only person who had any reason to look under the doormat. Laura took part in an experiment. She was locked in a room and had to crack a riddle to get out of it. On the table, she found a note with the numbers 11, 69, 96, and 88. The girl needed to figure out what they had in common. Can you do the same? All these numbers can be read in the same way if you position them upside down. A man on a motorbike crashed Mr. Ruby's store window, grabbed a dozen expensive watches, and drove away. When the police arrived, Mr. Ruby told them he was almost sure it had been his nephew, Patrick. The officers went to visit the guy. Because of a heavy downpour, they got there in only an hour. Patrick was at home, together with his friend. Look at the weather! I haven't been outside since yesterday. Patrick's friend confirmed his words. But the police didn't believe this story and arrested Patrick. Why? The guy's helmet is hanging on his motorbike. If it had been there since the previous day, it would be filled with rainwater now. Look at these two girls and their fridges. One of them has never had enough money until recently. A month ago, she won the lottery. Which girl is that? It's the girl on the left. High heels, a flashy dress, and a fridge filled to the brim. She looks like a person who has finally managed to get their hands on big money. Look at these people lounging near a swimming pool. They all seem to be wealthy. But in fact, only one of them is a millionaire. The girl sitting under the palm tree is wearing a lot of gold jewelry. But all this gold is fake. It leaves greenish marks on her body. The girl walking past the swimming pool is wearing sandals with a large logo on them. But the name of this brand is written wrong, so it's fake. The guy who's lying on the floating mattress is playing a game on his phone. But instead of an apple, there's a strawberry on his gadget. The man who's watering the plant is the millionaire we're looking for. There's a Mercedes keychain hanging out of his pocket. He also left a $100 tip for the waiter. Ethan and his girlfriend Anne went to explore a cave and got lost. After some time, they came across two people, a man and a woman. The man, bearded and rough-looking, had a shovel in his hands. I've been stuck here for a week. I know how to get to the surface, but I need your help. Come with me. The young woman exclaimed, Don't trust him. He's a criminal. Follow me. I've been here longer than him. I know where the exit is. Who should the guys believe? Ethan and Anne decided to follow the man. If the girl had been in the cave for more than a week, why does she look so tidy and has fresh flowers in her hair? Several gold bullion bars were stolen from a bank. The police figured out where they could be and who could take them. Without wasting time, they arrived at the main suspect's house. But since they were in a hurry, they forgot to bring a warrant. The man told them he wouldn't allow them to search his house. Come back with a warrant and we'll talk. An hour later, the police officers came back with a needed document. They thoroughly searched the house and garden but didn't find the gold. 
Suddenly, one of the officers exclaimed, I know where he hid the gold! Have you figured it out? The gold is in the swimming pool. When the police visited the man for the first time, the level of water in it was lower. A man shaves every day, but still has a long and thick beard. How is it possible? The man is a barber, and he shaves his clients. One day, a famous soccer coach went missing right from the locker room. The detective has three suspects, and all of them are from the coach's team. Brandon says that after training, he stayed on the pitch to practice a bit more. He hasn't been to the locker room yet. Andrew swears that straight after the training, he went outside to meet with his girlfriend. And James claims that when he was leaving the locker room, the trainer was still there. Who is the criminal? It's Andrew. He said he hadn't been to the locker room yet, but he's wearing not the uniform, but his street clothes. Five people were asked to step over a pencil that was lying on the floor. But for some reason, none of them managed to do it. Have you figured out why? The pencil was placed near the wall. How tricky. You board a small plane. Nice! You're the only passenger on board. In a few hours, you'll be sunbathing on the beach, sipping something cold and refreshing. But before that happens, you'll face an epic test to see if you've got the kind of survival skills you need to survive in the wild. Count up your right answers and see what it all means at the end of the video. You fasten your seatbelt and fall asleep just before takeoff. Suddenly, turbulence! You wake up from a dream where you were an octopus in an earthquake. The plane's shaking, your luggage falls out of the overhead. This is serious. You strap on an oxygen mask and notice a flash of lightning outside. A second later, you see another flash. But this time, it's your plane's engine. It's on fire. You're falling. The screeching of ripped metal, screams, and then darkness. You pass out. After a few seconds, you open your eyes and find yourself falling from the sky. Okay, get it together. You unfasten yourself from the chair to stop spinning. The first rays of sun appear over the horizon, and down below, you see a dense forest, a green field, and a small pond. By stretching out your body, you can change direction, you can steer. So, where are you going to land or crash? You have three seconds to decide. The best answer is the forest. A fall into water from that high up would hurt the same as falling flat on the ground. But tree branches can soften a fall. You plummet into the forest and lose consciousness. Day 1. Awake. Your whole body aches. Fortunately, you're not injured and you can even walk. Those branches saved your life. Yeah, this is a fairy tale. Now, where to? You don't have a map or a compass, then suddenly you hear the sound of a river. You need to choose a direction. Here are the options. Walk in a straight line. Find some moss on a tree and walk in the direction it's growing. Find the river and walk along it. You have 10 seconds to choose. Don't go straight if you don't want to get lost and walk in circles. Navigating by moss? Yeah, I just made that up to mess with you. You should go along the river. It'll lead to a pond or a lake, and there might be people there, or a road, or some signs at least. Day 2. You make it to a lake, but there's no sign of civilization. Now what? Maybe head back up the river? Along the way, you pass out again. You wake up and it's cold, so you drink some river water and try to make a fire. You collect dry twigs, brushwood, birch bark, and moss. Oh, sweet! A gas lighter and a piece of paper in your pocket. What's the best way to start a fire? Put the branches in a pile and pour gasoline on them? Put pieces of paper in the branches and fire them up. 
Make the branches into a triangle, place birch bark under, and light it. You have 7 seconds, and it's getting really cold! Don't pour that precious gasoline on the branches. It'll burn out too quickly, and those fumes are bad for you. The paper will burn off too fast, and the wood won't catch fire. The triangle of wood will let air pass through it. That's the key. Fire and air, a match made in heaven. <laughs> get it? Match? Okay. Day 3. You finally get warm, drink some water, and continue along the river. Uh-oh. You haven't eaten anything for three days. Gotta get on it. You don't know how to fish. So you go into the forest to find some food. You have a few choices. Berries. Eh, they look delicious and seem pretty juicy. Ants. Mushrooms. You have 7 seconds. Choose wisely. Ants are the most delicious and safe thing around. You just can't eat random berries or mushrooms. They can be poisonous. Now, how do you get those ants to march right into your mouth? Hey, I can't hand you all the answers. Day 4. A big bear is blocking your path. You shout to scare it away, but it just looks at you. It's not happy. And now it's coming your way. What should you do? Run as fast as possible, because bears are big and clumsy. Climb the nearest tree and sit up there till the bear goes away. Lie down in a fetal position and stay absolutely still. You have 5 seconds to make a choice, and it better be the right one. Bears are fast and can climb trees like they're oversized squirrels. The right decision is to pretend to be asleep. The bear will see that you're not a threat and probably will pass you by. Day 5. Heavy rain starts to fall. You need to hide under a tree, build shelter, and make another fire. Which of these three trees should you hide under? You have 7 seconds before you're soaked to the bone. The tree on the left is rotten and might crumble at any moment. There's a snake crawling in the tree on the right. Venomous or not, it's not worth the risk. The tree in the middle is perfect. Day 6. Your stomach starts to rumble. Those ants weren't exactly filling. You decide to catch a fish at all costs. Aha! You could use a piece of your clothing as bait. But where can you find a fishing rope? You have 10 seconds for this one. The answer is your shoelaces. They should be enough if you tie them together. After a long day of fishing, you finally catch one. Aha! Sushi! Day 7. Your journey along the river continues. Up ahead, you see that the river splits into two smaller streams. Decision time. Left or right. This could mean life or not. You have 7 seconds to decide your fate. Definitely the right stream. There are wolf tracks by the left stream. A pack of hungry wild animals? Yeah, no thanks. Day 8. No way! You're saved! In the distance, you can just make out the roof of a big house. You run over and tragedy. The house is totally abandoned and almost destroyed. But you still decide to go in. In the hallway, you see three doors. There's a sign with snakes and spiders on the first door. The second door also has a sign, a pit with spears at the bottom. The third door has a lightning bolt sign on it, probably some high voltage stuff going on in there. Which room should you choose? I'll give you 10 seconds for this one. Go for the third door. The house is abandoned, so the power's probably been out for years. You decide to stay the night, rest, and move on in the morning, even though it's super creepy. Day 9. Time to hit the road again. In the house, you find a piece of broken mirror and grab it just in case. 
you've been walking for hours, but the river doesn't seem to be leading anywhere. Then you hear the most magical sound. You look up. A helicopter! You need them to see you, but there's no time to start a fire. What can you do? The helicopter's about to fly off. Five seconds, quick! Grab that piece of mirror. You can reflect the sun off it and try and direct the light at the helicopter. Yeah, you've been spotted! But you can't be saved. No. Thunderclouds come out of nowhere and force the helicopter to fly away. Your best bet? Stay right where you are. That helicopter will come back for you tomorrow, hopefully. Day 10. You wake up in a good mood. The rescuers will be here soon. You take off your shoes to wash your feet in the river. Then, a not-so-magical sound. You hear a growl. Two wolves are staring down their noses at you. You start running in a total panic. The wolves start to chase you. They're catching up. There are three paths up ahead. The first road is covered in hot coals. The second one is littered with rusty nails. The third has broken glass all over it. Which path are you going to choose? You have two seconds. The wolves are coming right up behind you. Your best bet is the hot coals. You're running, which means you won't have time to feel any pain. It might get a little hot, but your feet will be safe. The wolves don't dare run through the coals, but they stay nearby. Great! Now the rescuers won't know where to find you. Wait a minute! How did these three paths appear in the forest anyway? People made them. You're on the right path! Civilization is near! Yeah! Food, water, Wi-Fi! Day 11. The helicopter appears in the sky again. You whip out your mirror and go to town. The helicopter starts to fly down, but it can't land on your side of the river. The forest is too dense. The rescuers are waiting for you on the other side. Quick! Three logs lie across the water. Which one's safe to run across? You have 10 seconds, so think carefully. The first log looks old. The river might carry it away at any moment. The third log, well, it's a crocodile. You need to cross the river on the second log. You're saved! Next stop, a cool ocean breeze. But what you don't know yet is that there's one more test. You'll be swept far out into the ocean after you accidentally fall asleep on a little boat you rented. But that's another story. Now, let's check out how well you did. Zero to four points? You better not go camping without an experienced guide. Hey, don't worry, survival in the wild isn't for everyone. 5 to 9 points? Not bad! If you get lost in the forest, you won't panic. But things might get a bit hairy if you have to stay out there for more than a couple of days. 10 to 12 points? Wildlife is your second home. If things get really bad, you could just camp out in the woods forever. Hey, just never mind that part about falling out of the plane without a parachute. Martin is a Harvard student from a wealthy family, and his parents want him to start dating a girl from the same la-di-da social circle. The guy was tired of arguing with his parents and decided to give in. He liked two girls, Emily and Samantha. But which one are his parents going to like? who is actually rich. Write your answer in the comments below if you want to help Martin. At first sight, the girl on the left, Emily, seems to have more money. But the jacket she is buying at a boutique is fake, because the name of the brand is written incorrectly. As for the girl on the right, Samantha. She's wearing real designer clothes, even though she's just doing homework. If a girl's financial status is important to Martin and his parents, he should pick Samantha. Look at these two girls and their fridges and comment below which of the sisters is now rich. It's the girl on the left, high heels, a flashy dress, and a fridge filled to the brim. 
She looks like someone who has finally managed to get their hands on big money. Thomas is an undercover detective, secretly visiting suspects, trying to figure out who has stolen a large sum of money. Today he has dined in two different houses with two different families. The first family treated him to several pizzas with various yummy toppings. The other offered him a steak and grilled vegetables. Now Thomas is a bit confused, because all the food is delicious and quite expensive. Can you help the detective figure out which family has more money? Share your ideas in the comments. Well, no matter how tasty the pizzas are, they're still cheaper than large pieces of meat. This means the family treating Thomas to the steak must have more money than the second one. But does it mean they are the criminals? Time and further investigation will show. Due to a technical issue, two families were given the same seats on a plane flying to France. An airline company worker offered one of the families to upgrade to business class. But it would cost a pretty penny. Which family is rich enough to pay the necessary sum? Comment below. The family on the left is rich. They have modern suitcases covered with stickers, so they have money to travel a lot. The members of the family on the right do look good and well off, but they have old and worn out suitcases with scratches. They probably spent all their money on designer clothes and jewelry to show off. Two guys are staring at themselves in the mirror. They both look successful and wealthy. But one of them is actually poor and is just pretending. I'm sure you know which of them it is. Prove me right and write your answer in the comments. A small hint, the mirror seems to be magic. The guy in a blue shirt is actually far from successful. In the mirror, he looks like a rich businessman, but pay attention to his real-life clothes. They're old and there's even a little hole in his shirt. He must be quite poor. You're a detective investigating petty crime. Today, you've been called to a supermarket where security guards have detained two women, suspecting them of shoplifting. Look at them attentively and write who is guilty in the comments below. It's the woman on the left. The lady on the right seems to be really pregnant, but the shape of the belly of the woman on the left is weird, to say the least. While you're at the supermarket, you manage to prevent another theft. One of these people was about to steal some Pringles. Can you figure out who? It's this young lady. Look at her palm-like ponytail. Very strange shape for such a hairstyle. There must be a pack of Pringles hidden inside. But if you disagree, make sure you write your version in the comments. Now, look at these girls. They've been captured and locked in a basement. All of them have their hands tied. But one of them has more chances to escape than the others. If you've figured out which of them it is, don't hesitate and share your answer in the comments. It's going to be the girl on the left. She's got long, beautiful nails. She's bound to have a file to look after them somewhere on her. It can help her cut the rope. One of these people on the train is hiding some treasure. Can you spot who it is faster than other bright side detectives? Let's check. Write your answer in the comments as fast as possible. Ah, it's this man. At first glance, he's just overweight. But once you look closer, 
you'll realize that his belly has an uneven shape and is even a bit lumpy. Both of these ladies are in a terrible hurry. They're going to be late for work. But while one of them might still get to the office on time, the other is definitely doing something wrong and won't make it on time. Put those attention skills of yours to good use and share your ideas in the comments. The first lady is bound to be late for work. She's trying to style her hair, but the tool she is using is unplugged. Look at these dishes very closely. Do you think any of them isn't safe to eat? Comment below, let's compare the answers. Look at this piece of cake. There's a spider on it. And is it spinning a tiny web? I wouldn't eat that dessert if I were you. Now, we've got these people who look pretty normal and all. But one of them is actually from the future. If you can figure out who it is and write your answer, you might save the planet. It's this guy. He's carrying a smartphone in his pocket. Now this looks like a regular picnic in the park, but one of these people is a time traveler. Find them faster than other brightsiders and make sure to share your answer in the comments. It's the guy with a USB port in his arm. We don't have those yet, that's for sure. Three people were stopped at the security check at an international airport. They were suspected of smuggling different valuables out of the country. The first man was heading for a beach resort. In his suitcase, there were lots of things people usually take to the seaside. An umbrella, a pair of sunglasses, sunscreen, and a beach towel. The second guy had a cage with three colorful birds and a pet carrier with a family of hamsters. He had all the necessary papers. The third man was traveling for business. In his bag, he had a suit, some documents, a toothbrush and toothpaste, and a bottle of very expensive shampoo. Now, we can only rely on your expertise and sharp eye. So tell us, who's the smuggler? It's the third guy. He's bald. Why would he need shampoo? On that day, several police officers arrived at the airport. They stopped a group of tourists who were flying to a Caribbean island. But the detectives didn't know the criminal's identity. That's why they had to search the baggage of all the passengers. If you're attentive enough to spot something weird, write your answer in the comments right away. Aha! It's the young woman on the left. If she was really going on a package tour to a hot place, why would she need a winter jacket? Mm, 